We are uh, so glad that you're with us and we know this time of season and Christmas is a beautiful time, but it's also a very busy time. So thanks for taking time out of your schedule. One of our prayers for all of you is that you have some uh, wonderful and beautiful time with family, that this is a season of rest and certainly the celebration of the birth of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. So thank you for being with us today. Uh, as Meredith said, we're excited to have our morning session team with us who has been working really hard, um, getting ready for morning sessions. In fact, some of you are like morning sessions. It's a new term. Uh, it's uh, We in the past have uh, referenced it as Bible studies, and uh, it's the same concept, but it happens in the morning, and it's a, a session. So uh, that is a new terminology that you'll hear for this gathering uh, for those who've been around a couple gatherings. So morning session team. Uh, let's start with the, just a chance to get to know our morning session team. And so I thought if you could just get, introduce yourself and your role uh, within the morning sessions and uh, how about your favorite gathering story? Uh, my name is Peter Nasker. I'm the uh, director for the morning session team. Um, oh, Peter. Yeah. I, I, can you hear him? Oh, okay. Go ahead. All right. <laughs> Uh, I'm still the, the director for the morning session team, uh, and uh, uh, my, my role of the gathering is kind of to help coordinate and bring together this team and then to, to make sure we've got some, some stuff to do in the morning that's helpful and beneficial to you. Um, when I think about my favorite gathering story, you know, it's often common for people to think about the big numbers and the connections. You start to see the church. Uh, you start to see yourself as part of something much bigger. Uh, and, and you certainly get that with the, the dome and the, the big, uh, big connections. But when I was a senior in high school, I, I got kind of a different view of that. Um, I was leaving a mass event one night and I was talking to, we were kind of walking with another youth group and uh, some people in our group were talking with people from another group and they found out that the place I was going to uh, go to college, Concordia, Nebraska, there was someone in their group going to Concordia, Nebraska too. And they're like, oh, you guys got to get connected. You're both going to the same. We never met each other. And, um, and lo and behold, then I, I met this, uh, this girl, Shauna is her name. And we met walking out of the, the, the dome, the Alamo dome in San Antonio. And then we became good friends in college and have stayed friends since then. So it's the big picture church is neat, but also those connections that you make uh, are, are really pretty cool. All right. Well, hi, I'm Kelly Limbach. Um, I, this is my second time to be writing um, for the Bible study part of the morning session. Um, so I'm kind of more behind the scenes. I love working with our presenters and helping them get prepared and then doing the writing. Um, my favorite gathering was last um, gathering in New Orleans because it was the first time I got to help. Um, we've been working and praying and um, preparing for so long that um, in the great room in the convention center at New Orleans, I took a picture of it completely empty. And um, Dan Weber and Sarah um, were gonna be presenting. And um, as the room just filled up, I took another picture and it was like all that preparation, all that prayer, it just came to life. And um, it was very emotional for me too. And I took another picture with the, all the people behind me and I was back in the sound booth, but um, it was still just really cool to see it come to life, all of that planning and prayer and preparation. Hey everyone, uh, I'm Todd Liefer. Uh, I'm a pastor at uh, Bethany Lutheran Church in Austin, Texas, and I am serving at the gathering this time as a manager for the Bible study team. Uh, favorite gathering story, there's so many, uh, but I would say one of mine uh, is also uh, as a youth and walking out of the, um, the mass event time, which is just such a, a crazy, awesome experience just to see that many other youth and uh, who are, are Jesus followers, just like just like you. Um, but I remember it was like my second night or third night at the gathering. I remember we were all leaving the, the stadium and going back to hotels because there's like dances and all that stuff going on uh, at night back then. And I remember though, on the way there, we um, we interacted with another uh, youth group that was um, clearly going through a pretty big crisis um, at that time. And you could just tell, you could see it on their faces, something just, just terrible had just happened uh, within the group. And I remember being right there and our youth group were there uh, alongside them. And I remember having the opportunity um, just to be with them and to sit and, and to pray uh, with one of uh, their, their members of their youth group. 
And I was a, I was a high school freshman uh, at that time. And that was, as far as I can remember, the, the first time I had actually like prayed for someone with someone um, in that kind of um, capacity. And so I know just because of being at the gathering and being exposed to all of that, 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 that led me kind of to that experience. So I just look back at that and that's just uh, one of those awe moments I have and how God works at the gathering. Well, that's great. That's great. Uh, as, by the way, sorry, Peter. I guess you got to turn on your your uh, your sound uh, on your computer. Who knew? <coughs> Excuse me. So, um, by the way, I love seeing all the people that are on the webinar. Um, also, uh, how many times you've been on the gathering? Uh, I love seeing Sarah. I know uh, is your first time leading a group, and so we we've, we've especially been praying a lot for those who are leading their first group, knowing that. Uh, there are a lot of, of things that come with that. So we're hoping that this is a time where you can get just to know the gathering a little bit better and how, how things kind of move and go. Certainly there are always some changes year to year. So even those who've been, several of you who have led five or six to it, um, a chance for you to see some of the changes that have happened as well. Um, one of the things that we have said is uh, there are certain things that as a whole group we do every day together. Uh, one of those things is the morning session. Uh, so the very first thing in our day that we start with uh, really diving into the this year, our theme, this, and uh, particularly the Psalms together every day. So Peter, can you tell us a little bit about what your group has been focused on uh, in regards to the Psalms? Yeah, so if you're familiar with youth gatherings, you know that we always have some sort of theme, a sort of connection from the scriptures that, that guides uh, that guides what we think about, what we talk about, what we learn, what we put into practice. Uh, and for this gathering, we're focusing on the book of Psalms. And, and of the, all the different books in the Bible, the Psalms is, is, are really kind of unique in the sense that uh, not only they, are they the words of God to us, but they also give us words to speak back to God. Um, when Luther talked about uh, the Psalms, he called it a little Bible uh, because he said uh, everything we need to know, everything we need to know for the Christian life, uh, understood properly through the lens of, of Jesus' death and resurrection, we find in, in, the, in the Psalms. And, and so it's, uh, there's a couple things about that that we want to make sure uh, youth and adults at the gathering understand. Uh, one, we want to take seriously that, this, that the Psalms were written before Jesus. This was the people of Israel, the people of God before Christ, and, and they were still looking forward to Jesus' birth and life and death and resurrection. Um, and so we want to take that seriously and read it as such. Uh, but we also read them as post-resurrection Christians. We know that Christ has died and Christ has risen and Christ has ascended and he is returning. And these Psalms then sustain us along the way. Uh, one of the things that we've learned about the Psalms that I think has personally been very helpful is we've taken seriously how honest uh, the Psalms are. Uh, they're very real, very raw. Uh, they give voice to the kinds of emotions and struggles and doubts and frustrations and joys that we have as, as the people of God. Um, and so one of the things we want to do at this gathering and in the time leading up to it is we want to help uh, all the participants make the Psalms their own prayers. Um, use the words that God has given us to speak back to him, to name the the, the realities that we face in life. Um, and so we're really excited about uh, meditating on the Psalms and teaching about the Psalms and, and kind of learning how to study the Psalms, and yet also uh, putting them into practice in our own prayers and our own life together. Yeah, that's, that's great. And one of the things that we did early on, um, and, and certainly uh, the three of you know this, we, we challenged all our planners really to be into the Psalms, to dive into them personally within their devotional life, and uh, to, to just kind of absorb uh, what the psalmists are saying. And, um, and I'll tell you, it is it has really shifted my love for this book. Uh, I, I would say I maybe didn't start that way uh, when we first selected this theme, but it certainly has been a really deep experience for me. And so I thought we'd just say, uh, we talk a little bit about for the three of you, uh, how that experience has been for you. What, what's it been like to kind of dive in personally to the Psalms? And, and Kelly, let's start with you on this one. Okay, well, I'm clearly not a pastor and um, I'm an English teacher, a high school English teacher. So I love books and stories and reading the Bible has always been a joy of mine. 
and I'm glad what, to hear what you said, Derek, because the Psalms have not been a place for me to dwell. I love stories. So growing up, um, I related to Peter in the Bible because I'm a talker and sometimes I say the wrong things. Now I'm a mom of four kids and I feel like Moses is my person because for the last 15 years, I've been leading these children through the wilderness where they're um, asking, are we there yet? And they're complaining about the food. So I, I attached to those people. Um, the Psalms aren't that. I don't always know who's speaking. I don't always know the backstory or even how things are going to end up for the people in the Psalms. Uh, and so I think that kept me from diving in. Um, but I have been diving in lately. And what I found is it's just, instead of focused on the characters, and, and they're not characters, they're real people. Um, instead of focused on those people, it's the relationship between those people and God. So I'm getting to know God, um, my savior in such a different way because I'm seeing these people in their relationship with him. And so, um, and I'm finding tons of familiar songs in there that I know from church or contemporary radio, um, Christian radio. Uh, this, so there's a lot that I do know there. And then the coolest thing for me lately has been that my parents are praying through the Psalms and my mom is uh, battling cancer right now. And um, it's been almost five years. And from the start, they have been using the Psalms as their prayers. And they've told me, I don't often have the words to take to God. And so then they know I'm in the Psalms right now. So they'll send me a Psalm and say, this is it. We're going in for an appointment today. And this is what we're praying. So even as a mom of four kids, I'm still learning from my parents through the Psalms. Um, and so it's become an intergenerational thing. And I'm finding confidence to say those as my prayers and to model that for my kids. So this has been a blessing that I could not have anticipated to be working on this gathering and in the book of Psalms. So I'm grateful for that. Oh, that's, that's great. That's great. Uh, Todd, how about you? Yeah, uh, I'd echo a lot of what Kelly said about, you know, when I was first getting into the Psalms, that one of the struggles for me was how much, uh, I don't know, uh, when, when you read about those, the, the, the writers and you read what they're going through, like, you don't know, like Kelly said, like, you don't know the backstory. Uh, you don't know uh, exactly what's going on. Some cases you do, but a lot of cases you don't. And so that was at first kind of like one of the struggles of it. I know that can be a struggle with the Psalms that it's hard to relate because you just don't know what's all going on. But for me, I, I started to look at the Psalms kind of like, uh, kind of like I do music, at least like music on the radio and that you listen to, because you'll listen to songs and you don't know what that artist was going through or why they wrote that song, but you connect with songs because uh, you just, you, 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 you latch on to part of their story or part of what they're saying, and then you kind of enter into whatever it is they're trying to convey. So I look at the Psalms that way, or at least that's one of the ways I look at it. Reading the Psalm, like I, I have to put aside my like theology hat and my like dissecting hat and just like read it and see what, what journey they're taking me on. And that has been such a fulfilling thing because you know you, you see these people that some are going through clearly great days um some are going through horrible days and yet they have this this sense of of, of faith uh they have clear faith that god is working things out and so for me that's been so inspiring because you know life throws things at you and when you read these psalms you you know that there are people who've gone through things that uh that i'm going through uh, even though I don't know what they went through, uh, I know that they had faith in God, uh, faith in, in their Savior. And so for me, that's been uh, such a fulfilling thing. Yeah, yeah that's... Maybe, maybe I'll just jump in there too. Um, one of the things for me that's been really helpful is reading the Psalms has forced me to slow down. Um, <laughs> you know, I, sometimes I, I think we wonder what, you know, we all know we're supposed to read our Bibles, right? Um, and I'm not sure we always know exactly why or to what end. Uh, the the Psalms force you to slow down and, and read them as your own words um, and read them with an openness to what, what, what God may be teaching you read them as, um, as uh, reflections of your own heart and your own life. And, and, and 
I, I'm guessing I'm, I could speak for most of us here in this webinar. Life is so fast paced in our culture and we move so quickly. And sometimes even scripture and devotion becomes, we got to get this done and check it off. And, and the Psalms force us to slow down um, and, and to, to reflect and to pray and, and to be shaped by, by what God is saying to us. Yeah, I, I don't know about you guys. I, I remember um, early on, um, and we had some different presenters talking about this, and and that was a, that was a huge word, right? Hey, just slow down, take your time through this, and um, and, and Peter, same thing. It's so easy to find that, right? You read through it, get it done, check it on. Um, I've accomplished today. Ne next day, I, I'll go to the next psalm, and um, and even the the thing of journaling through it. That's that's the practice that I've really used is. Is sitting down, um, slowing down, journaling through it, and uh, and there are times where literally you spend 20, 25 minutes, and you, you get in two verses, kind of gotten through two things because it just leads you so many different places. Um, and and I, and I think the other thing that that has been so powerful for me is just how um, the Psalms give you permission to be real. And um, you write these are Psalms emptying their hearts and saying uh, everything that that's going on in their lives, and and just being able to bring it all before God and. and and not worry about what other people are thinking. Uh, and so it, in prayer life, how freeing that has been for, for me personally. So I, I'm excited about this journey for, I think, for our youth groups that are coming in and for our youth who sometimes just need, need to hear the freedom to be real um, before God, which of course comes into our, our theme of real present God. So uh, it's gonna lend itself quite a bit. So, um, so think about this, starting our morning, right, within in Psalms 46. Can you uh, tell just a little bit about, um, for, for those who've never been there, uh, what, what that, that morning rhythm kind of looks like? Sure. Um, so uh, morning session, uh, one of the reasons we, uh, we kind of coined that phrase is we wanted to give uh, participants uh, the idea that we're all doing something together, like you said, uh, in, in the morning. Um, however, uh, we don't all meet in the same place and not necessarily all at the same time, although it's pretty close. Um, participants will be uh, assigned uh, a, a particular location, uh, which comes with its own uh, morning session uh, presenter, uh, morning session speaker. Uh, so, uh, so soon, I don't think those have been sent out yet, uh, but soon participants will know where they go uh, each day, each morning of the gathering, uh, those three full days of the gathering. And uh, so that will either be in a hotel ballroom or at the convention center, uh, one of those places. But that's the same place she'll be every single day uh, of those, those first three mornings. Um, or those three full mornings of the gathering. And uh, just let me tell you, you, you don't know who your uh, Bible or your morning session presenter uh, is yet, but we have a dynamite team of folks who are going to bring it in the morning. Uh, they, they are going to make it definitely worth your while uh, to start out your gathering experience each day uh, in, in, in morning session. Yeah. <laughs> oh, you just got in right in time. That's good. <laughs> We're timing your responses. Uh, oh, that's, that's good. And, and there's certainly a lot more that's going to come out in that in, in January and February. So you'll, you'll hear more about that as, as those details are getting finalized. Um, and um, it, it sounds like, by the way, Kelly, I think you've struck a nerve. We, we could do a, a session on Moses as a mother. Uh, be a full session it looks like right here so that's that's awesome hey one of the things i want to if you're with us today i would love for you uh, it would be helpful for us is if you've got a favorite psalm like a, a psalm that you love or a verse that you love if you've got one of those uh go ahead and type it in the chat session we'd love to to know what those are uh as we're doing some of our our uh, resources and stuff like that um like psalm 23 I think a lot of us know that. If you got one, go ahead and type that in. Uh, we would love that. Also, the other thing, just want to remind you, if you've got any specific questions for the morning session team about what they do or um, things that you're curious about, please type those in. That's what this is for. So I want to encourage those questions as well. Uh, let, let's move a little bit to, uh, you, you guys have been at this before, and I want to talk a little bit about what Tell me a little bit about what, what's one of your favorite morning session 
memories, uh, something that, that happened. Peter, why don't we start with you? Yeah, this, this took place, I think, back in 2010, I believe. It was in New Orleans, I know. And, um, and one of the, the Bible study or morning session leaders, uh, Dan Weber, uh, a pastor from, uh, well, he was from out in Idaho at the time, um, he was leading the morning session. And, uh, you, you know, we design this, we plan it so that you go to the mass event at night and then you go to morning session in the morning and you go to mass event at night and morning session the next morning and they kind of tie together. And, and so it's, 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 it's neat when you see these connections. Well, Dan, in, in the middle of his uh, morning session, he uh, kind of stopped and he started singing very quietly, almost in a whisper voice a song that had been central to the previous night mass event. Uh, it was uh, The God of the City, I think, by Chris Tomlin, was a, a, a song that had been central in the mass event. And he just paused and he, he started singing that song like in a whisper voice. And it was so cool. I was sitting in the back of the room, you know, 6,000 people in this room. I was sitting in the, or standing in the back of the room watching this and everybody started singing in kind of a whisper voice with him. Uh, and it was this really cool connection. Uh, between, between Dan and the, the participants and between the mass event the previous night and how we were developing that, some of those ideas that morning. Uh, and it was just one of those moments that you think, yeah, this is, this is kind of the, the church being almost kind of like we planned it. Um, but, but what's key here, one of the reasons I like that illustration or that example is that uh, the mass events and the morning sessions really do, the, the gatherings kind of organized so that they build on each other and they unpack each other and they prepare each other. Uh, and so as you're thinking about that, whenever you're looking at your schedule and how you're make, getting everything in, uh, you want to make sure you recognize the morning session as kind of almost a follow-up from the previous mass event where we unpack some things maybe we couldn't do in the, in the big house uh, and also a preparation for the, the whole day leading into the next uh, mass event. Yeah, that's a great point, Peter. Uh, Kelly, how about you? Um, well, so last uh, gathering in New Orleans was my first. Um, I like what Peter said that we can unpack things in the morning sessions and we were really intentional in our planning there and we talked it probably to death and we uh, were focusing on humility, um, community and identity. And um, I live in Seward, Nebraska. This is my first year at Seward High. I've been working at Concordia and I work mostly with freshmen. And so after the gathering in the fall, I got to meet many freshmen in college who had been to our gathering and um, the morning sessions. And the discussion that continued from the morning session, the words we gave them, um, we focused on in Christ. I can do things in Christ. I can um, uh, uh, forgive you in Christ, uh, but the identity piece, oh my goodness, the identity piece from the morning sessions, the words we gave them, um, or the words the Lord gave us to share, however you want to say that, resonated. And I hear kids still refer back to, you know what, I did horrible in my season, um, my senior season, but my identity is not there. Um, I didn't get the grade I wanted, but that is not my identity. And they use those words um, frequently. And that was just uh, a amazing to me. That's great. That's great. Yeah, we're going to talk about that continuation because that's that's a really important part of the gathering. We're focusing on that much, much more of how do you help the this not just be a five-day experience, but something much longer and, and deeper. So uh, we're going to get to that a little later in this uh, webinar as well. Hey, Todd. Yeah, so the last gathering uh, in New Orleans, I, I was I had the opportunity to be a Bible study uh, presenter. Uh, and so I, I just loved the experience, but one, one image that just, I just loved using and I loved seeing it at work in the room, uh, was the, uh, the me monster. Uh, if anyone was at the gathering last time, uh, we had the youth, you know, uh, bring out their me monsters, uh, as a way to talk about, I think it was humility and how, uh, you know, so often when we're interacting with others and we have issues with others, there's so often uh, like a me monster problem. So I just remember just the whole, uh, you know, room of youth just standing up and, and, and being monsters uh, for a second. And we really had them get into that. I just loved it because it connected so well. And I know I heard of youth groups talking about that for the rest of the gathering experience. I think that was our last that was our last Bible study last time. Probably should have been our first because at the gathering, it was kind of nice uh, after they heard that uh, 
you know, work well with one another. I think it helped heal some issues going on uh, in the groups. But I loved that uh, Me Monster image so much that uh, for <laughs> for uh, uh, Reformation Day uh, this year, <laughs> I, I dressed up as uh, the me monster <laughs> at our church, uh, at our church uh, carnival. I actually brought that uh, that image back to our congregation, and we did a whole sermon series um, on the me monster and and finding our, our center uh, instead in, in Jesus. And so that was just it's just fun. I mean, come on. <laughs> <laughs> I, I got to ask just, you know, Todd, between you and I, was that, was that a whole thing based on someone specific on your team? <laughs> he who shall not be named. Um. <laughs> <laughs> I, it just, it was just curious. It was one of the questions uh, in the chat box here. I know why maybe not. <laughs> <laughs> no, we were the most humble team of all that. We were so incredibly humble. I can't oh. believe how humble we were. So it couldn't have been anyone on our team. You, you must have been because you kept on telling us that. So uh, that was, that was, it's always good to know. Always good to know. All right. So one of the things we talk about this, and I know we've, in the planning meetings, we've talked a lot about how important it is in helping adults prepare, um, knowing that um, it, it's bigger than uh, the gathering, right? That the, the best kind of, the best, um, ministry happens back in the congregation, and so we our, our heart continues. How do we help adults and prepare them to lead their groups, back, not only to the gathering but after the gathering as well? And uh, one of the things that we've been hearing back from adults is that that not all adults consider themselves uh, spiritual leaders within their groups, and that's that's just something that is a struggle for some of them. So. I want to ask you guys, as you have thought through how you help adults in this whole thing. In fact, Todd, I'm going to ask you first, uh, what are some different ways that you can help them, help the adults prepare their youth spiritually for the gathering and their role as adult leaders? Sure, sure. So uh, our team, uh, yes, has been working on these morning sessions, uh, these experiences at the gathering. Uh, but something we've been working on is to, to provide uh, some some resources for uh, youth groups, youth leaders uh, to use uh, before the gathering to help them with that spiritual preparation. Uh, so I, that's what, that's the first thing. I, I definitely uh, point uh, youth leaders uh, to those resources. Uh, there has been um, one uh, for sure that has already been released from our team, um, the pre-gathering study, the number one. Uh, that's already on the gathering website. I'm sure Meredith either already posted it or there, there it is on the chat. <laughs> uh, so they can check that out right now. Uh, but there are more studies coming. Uh, those should be released in early 2019 uh, that you can, you can dig into. The idea uh, is that you can use those studies, uh, hopefully during your, your regular uh, youth time or whenever you're having meetings together with the youth going on the gathering. Uh, you can use those uh, as, as conversation starters and times to be in the word. And uh, we hope that those are helpful resources uh, for getting uh, the youth just to, to start getting into the Psalms and to help leaders get into the Psalms uh, as well. Uh, there's leader notes uh, inside those uh, guides. So you're not on this, doing this on your own. We, leaders, we wrote these uh, with you in mind on, on giving you words to say and, and, and uh, maybe uh, sample answers all we're trying to make it as easy as possible uh on you um one other way uh, i know that's in uh, i think the first gathering um bible study that's already been released and i loved this our our team uh, is really encouraging uh different uh, your youth group uh if you're watching this your youth group uh to invite people from your congregation uh, to come and share maybe at, during your, your youth group times or your gathering meetings. Uh, invite different members of your congregation to come, one to maybe each of those meetings for the next couple months, and sh have them share um, a favorite psalm uh, with, with your group. Uh, because what we've found about the psalms is that typically, um, especially in, in, well, across generations, uh, most people have like a psalm that really speaks to them. And we thought that would be a great way to kind of bring your whole congregation, your church together in this gathering experience. Because I know, you know, there are folks that can share uh, their favorite psalm and why it's so meaningful 
to them because it might have been a, a, some words that, that spoke to them at a really, uh, really important time in their life, a really maybe heart wrenching time of their life. Um, but we hope that would be a way to show your youth uh, that these psalms are like it's real stuff. Uh, th these are things that people in God's church have, have clung to uh, for so many years, and they're they're, they're surrounding you. They're surrounding you uh, in your congregation in the pews uh, right now. Uh, so that's one way. I'm sure the team can offer some other ways too. But those are some ways we, we hope your your group can uh, get into the Psalms, get into Bible studies, and connect with your your larger church. Yeah, Todd, I really appreciate that, especially think about the, the importance of, uh, of it not being the gathering, just a youth group experience, but involving your whole congregation in something like this. And the interaction, intergenerational element uh, is, is really important within, um, within a church, too. So thanks for that. Uh, Kelly, how about you? Um, well, I was going to talk a little bit about how I've been trying to settle into the Psalms. Um, is that okay? Yeah, absolutely. Okay. Um, I think Todd just did such an excellent job there. And I do think that that whole component of getting the generations involved um, to speak to each other, the congregations are there to support our youth. It shouldn't just be one person leading them. Um, so to invite those people to be a part of it, sometimes we need to be asked. And I think it's really important to ask people um, because there's a lot of gifts to be shared and too often uh, you, again, I'm not a pastor and you don't know if people want to hear your voice if you're not a pastor. Maybe I don't have something to offer, but the Psalms, like Todd said, are something that most people are somewhat familiar with, at least one or two, um, or they've heard it sung somewhere and they'd be willing to share. So I guess that would be my biggest tip to do that is don't do it on your own. Um, have the people around you um, pour into your group as well. And I think that builds the support. Um, can I say it financially? I think that builds the support financially as well because you, you're involving them. Excellent, excellent, good. Um, Peter, how about you? What are some other resources that are available? I know we talked about some uh, pre-event Bible studies, others that are coming out. Are, are there other things that, that can help them? Yeah, you know, I'll, I'll just kind of pull back the curtain just a little bit here to the gathering planning process. Um, I've been part of gathering plannings for a number of uh, youth gatherings. And one of the things that's, that's really a, a great um, experience for those of us who are tasked with trying to organize this stuff is that we, we spend a couple of years digging deeply uh, and learning from others um, among us. Um, and, and so there, there's a couple specific tools that, that, uh, that I want to mention uh, that are, are really helpful. Uh, on the, the, the website, I'm sure Meredith will put it up there, there's two documents. One is a, a theological study, uh, which was prepared by uh, uh, Joel Lambauer, who's uh, the, uh, one of our synodical theologians. Uh, and also there's a study, a kind of a talking points document uh, prepared by uh, uh, Dan Weber, who's a pastor uh, in Seattle. Uh, those are, were both written to guide the planners. Uh, they, were, they were prepared, and, and we almost treated them like studies ourselves, where we spent hours kind of just kind of reflecting and pondering and discussing them. Um, and, and the idea was that those documents kind of stand behind everything that happens at the gathering. Uh, the mass events, uh, the morning sessions, the, the sessions during the day, uh, even the in the, um, the in the convention center, the activities, that kind of stuff, all the interactive things, the theology in those two documents kind of guide that. Uh, now, I, you may be thinking to yourself, well, the last thing I want to do is read some theological paper by some synodical official or something like that. Uh, the good news is, is uh, Joel Lambauer is, is a gets young people and he writes very on a way that it's very readable uh and and pastor weber's uh, is, is a very good communicator he's a great preacher and and those things so here's what i encourage you to do if you're an adult leader uh this is a great opportunity for you to learn and to grow uh, as you prepare to be a leader uh, you may not know much about the psalms that's fine you may not feel like you're very you maybe you haven't been in the, in the the church or the lutheran church for for very long uh, that's fine. These are great opportunities for you to grow. Um, and, and if you're more of a high tech person, which I assume if you're watching this, you at least know how to get onto a webinar. Um, there are also, I believe, webinars 
uh, with, with Lambauer and Weber kind of leading through those documents. And so you could look at this as a, those are great opportunities for growth yourself, your own personal knowledge and faith uh, growth opportunities. Yeah, there actually, um, there is a webinar that, uh, that, that Joel did and, and Dan's been on another one that we talked through some of that stuff too. So we'd encourage you to go back and listen to that. That was kind of the basis that we started with and it's a really good way. And it's a great way. It's like a, it's a 40 plus page paper with and It's filled with tons of information, print it, bind it and give it to someone for a Christmas gift. I mean, your Christmas list is done. Um, all your favorite people and all your favorite people can get a copy of that on youth ministry. Now that's, that's our gift to you. So I uh, would encourage you to do that. It's a, a great resource. Uh, let's look a little bit as uh, we, we talked a little bit before, want to get to this again. Um, we talked about the gathering uh, kind of being prolonged a little bit. So not just five days, but something, Kelly, I love what you said. You know, our class came back, we talked right. about this and we continued that conversation, which is, we love to hear those kind of things. So we talked a lot about how do we help the gathering continue um, more than the five days. So um, as we talk through kind of the momentum and building out of the gathering, uh, Peter, can you tell us, you know, what are, what are some of the resources that your team has been working on um, to help the conversation um, continue? Yeah, so, so Kelly and then Derek both mentioned kind of an organic just continuation of the theme. Uh, and, and that's really cool because it just comes from the experience. Uh, but we also understand that it doesn't always just come automatically. Uh, and, and so there's a couple of things that we are providing, uh, a number of things we're providing to try to help continue that. Uh, the goal really is if, if this event is just a five day thing, it may be a great experience, but it's not gonna have the kind of impact that we hope it will. Uh, and, and so the youth ministry office and, and our team have been working hard to, to provide a, a whole year worth of resources uh, that will continue to unpack uh, the Psalms, the theme, to help people take what they learned here and apply it in their local context and in the global context. Um, and so the, we're committing to a, a full 12 months of Bible studies, resources. They're all going to be available and clearly communicated through uh, LCMS Youth Ministry. Uh, and so I really encourage you to uh, even, even when you're thinking with your youth and talking with your youth and their families and your congregation, to, to communicate in your congregation that this, is, this event is kind of a, a springboard uh, more than a culmination. Uh, you know, the gathering is not we do all this work leading up to it and then we finish. Uh, it's more we're doing all this work leading up to it so that we can then pro let this event propel us into a Christian life and a Christian community uh, that, that goes well beyond uh, this particular event. So stay tuned with those. Those will be publicized very well, and, and it will be uh, very helpful to your youth group, especially for those of you who are tasked with continuing to lead studies. We want to equip you with, with the kind of resources that will, will follow from um, the gathering itself. Excellent. How about you, Todd? Yeah. Uh, so after the gathering, uh, we hope that uh, that experience would just instill in youth and leaders just that devotional life. Uh, that's, that's something we're really going to emphasize in morning session. I know I'm sure mass events will as well. Uh, just that that need for us to slow down, like uh, y'all have already mentioned, and just be in the word and to spend that time uh, with God in prayer and what he's written for us to, to read right there. Uh, so we hope that after uh, the gathering experience that your youth and your youth group can have just uh, um, uh, be, be affirmed and be encouraged uh, in your devotional life um, to carve out that time, to use that time. Uh, so we, we hope that, that we can instill that in, in you, uh, particularly in the Psalms. Uh, one, one thing that uh, might be a helpful thing for youth leaders, uh, Derek, you mentioned um, journaling, uh, journaling version, I think, of the, of the Psalms. Uh, that would be a great uh, thing, I think, for, for youth to, to get into. Um, I know there's resources out there that uh, youth can do that. And I think, Kelly, you do journaling too, right? Uh, yeah, I'm going to try to fit that in at some point. Yeah. Okay, sorry. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Spoiler. But, uh, but 
that is just, a, again, a great way to slow down, be in the word. And uh, there, again, that's such a, it's such a thing right now. You can find uh, those resources with, you know, uh, books on one side, blank page on the other. That, that's just, that's huge. So maybe that's a way uh, that you can get the Psalms into your devotional life. Um, but uh, lots of other ways as well, uh, as I'm sure Kelly will tell you. <laughs> well, I actually uh, was asked to lead the high school Bible study and um, was thrown in with no resources. Um, I'm a teacher, so people think, oh, just do it. Um, so I feel for the, the um, youth leaders that are out there that maybe don't have a ton of resources. So I'm really, really proud of the gathering for pursuing this um, year long um, continuation of our theme. Uh, right away, we'll have a post-gathering study that'll be um, posted for the groups on their way home. So you can already start the idea that this is a continuing conversation. We don't need to table it. Um, also, they're a little bit squirrely and tired on the way home. It'll give you something to talk about that's productive. You know, uh, I think that's really helpful. Um, and I it's very intentional on our part to want to continue that support that you see us as a support for all youth, not just at the time of the gathering. Um, and what Todd was talking about with journaling, I get thrown into places sometimes. I think it's because I'm that Peter character that talks too much. And so I end up places I don't intend to. So I've been, um, the whole visual faith movement that's happening right now, I think you've probably seen stuff about it. Um, I decided just to go with it and I grabbed the leftover school supplies from the kids beginning of the year, like Crayola brand, that's it. Um, and the wax paper, cause that helps between the Bible. I didn't buy a special Bible or anything, but I invited youth um, to Bible journal and it was intentional on my part because I needed to settle in to the Psalms um, I did not take the time to sit down at first. I could read them in probably, what, two minutes, most of them, like you could be in and out. But if I read a psalm and then I thought about it and I found an image, um, Pinterest is really helpful there, um, that reflected what I was experiencing with that psalm, I would take the time and I would... Um, visually journal that way so just in pictures and i'm not artistic it's not like a gift i have it was a necessary means to get me to slow down and the kids really responded to that we would start with reading a bible reading and a prayer and then we'd sit around a table with crayola um products and and go and it was really um probably the most impactful thing that I've done spiritually in my adult life. That isn't something I learned, you know, along the way when I was young. So I think that would be a great option for some of you. That's good. And in fact, Kelly, let's go off this a little bit because I, I think uh, actually Ryan made a comment in uh, Ryan Howard and the, um, the box. I think that's really true for a lot of people that, um, that youth, and I would say probably not just youth, I think adults struggle with this too, of finding time to do devotions where it's maybe here and there, but it's not a consistent practice that, that, is, that is done in our days, our mornings, evenings. Um, and, and so I think there are a lot of people that really struggle with that. And, and so can I'll, I'll just throw this open to, to anyone who wants to answer. What are some ways that they can, they can encourage their... Um, not only themselves, but they encourage their kids. Uh, I think about like pre preparation meetings when they get their kids together and, and the, getting ready for the gathering. What are, what are some different things that you would suggest that can help them, encourage them in devotional life? I don't mind saying something. I don't know if this is my favorite thing about the Psalms is that um, if you, the, our kids are busy, right? Like, um, and they come when they can and sometimes they can't. And when we have a series going and you miss one, it's hard to jump back in. The Psalms have been so helpful for me in devotional life is because I can invite people in and it can be a one time devotional. And if they have to miss the next time because of a game or a concert, they come back again and they haven't really missed a piece of the puzzle, like, and they can jump back in with the Psalms. So I've really liked that aspect. It, it, it's less guilt, I think, too. Like, oh, I haven't gone in two weeks. There's no way I'm going to know. So I shouldn't go again. But if they know it's going to be these individual studies on a Psalm each time, that's been really helpful. That's great. Yeah, I'll, I'll add in too. I, I want to pick up on something else that I think Todd said it earlier. Um, the, the involvement of other members of your congregation. Um, we feel like it's really important to help youth through the gathering and through the lead up and the follow up, not only to have a, an individual experience or not even just have a, a youth group experience, but to have an experience that draws them closer to the body of Christ in your context. Um, and, you know, if you, if you kind of throw it out to your congregation, 
uh, ask people about their devotional lives and how they've uh, incorporated the Psalms particularly into their devotional lives, you could, I mean, I can imagine you having a whole series of people who would want to come and, and interact with your kids and share ideas like Kelly shared uh, that who knows what, what the, the, the body of Christ has been doing along these lines. Uh, I can think for one, uh, you know, something that, that Kelly mentioned earlier too, the, the, the hymns and the songs that we sing, so many of them are drawn from the Psalms. And, and uh, there can be, a, in a lot of ways, this, and you'll get this from Landbauer's paper when you read it, uh, the Psalms are songs, really. Um, and, and so the, 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 the role of music and devotion. Um, there's all sorts of things we can explore uh, and you kind of want to unleash the body of Christ in your local context to share, share how they've uh, gone about this part of their Christian life. One thing uh, for me, you know, I know as a youth leader, because uh, two gatherings ago, I was leading uh, my own youth group back in my last congregation. Uh, and I know when you're serving in that role, and, and I'm sure maybe some of our uh, adult uh, volunteer adult leaders might feel this way, you feel like you always have to have like answers <laughs> to, to everything. Um, but when you're in these, um, these youth uh, gathering times, like these meetings and, and, and your Bible studies leading up to the gathering, um, honestly, uh, I think it'd be great for you just to get into the Psalms and with your youth, just start asking questions. Um, and you don't have to feel like you have to have all the answers to all the things right now. Because there's, like we said before, there's a lot of things in the Psalms we don't know. Um, but I think a great way uh, just to get into the Psalms and to show how real they are and how youth leaders, how real you are, uh, is that we don't always have all the answers. Uh, we know the answer is Jesus all the time. We know that. Uh, we believe in that. Um, but sometimes as we're navigating through life, and you can see that in the Psalms, uh, there aren't always like, like rock solid answers to the, the issues that we're going through. Um, so I encourage youth leaders to get into the Psalms with your group, but don't feel that pressure uh, that you have to like know everything. <laughs> I think actually it'd be better <laughs> and be much more real uh, youth leaders if you can start to just show your vulnerability, show that you maybe don't know everything because you don't, I don't. Uh, and that gives your youth permission to be real, which would be an amazing starting point as you're making that journey to the gathering. That's, that's great. Actually, uh, Kayla has a, had a great comment here. Um, they start their, uh, their, uh, well, they've started a whole series in Psalms, uh, with their youth group. And, um, it's been a great chance for her youth to connect, kind of connect with that book. And it's been helpful. They start their time with uh, each week by sharing a lament or, or a Thanksgiving, um, uh, which, which could be interesting, right? Uh, there's probably lots of lamenting and Thanksgiving. So I, I mean, really in our culture today, right, there is a, there is a trend, a lot of talk about um, being uh, thankful and, um, and, and counting blessings and seeing what's around you, um, and the Psalms are full of that. Uh, plus lamenting. I don't, I don't think we always, we don't always lift that up a little, uh, we, or we make people feel guilty about that. Um, I, I think even on our planners, what I, what I've appreciated is there are times where we'll look at a Psalm and uh, eight different people see something different in that Psalm that hits them personally, or, or even at times that I've read through it, I don't know about you guys, but as I've read through it, um, there's a certain thing that's said that just makes you think about someone else and, and giving a chance to share that and saying, hey, I was reading this, this verse. Um, I want to share it with you. I know what's going on in your life. It, there's just, there's so much that, uh, that interacts with our daily life um, and, and, and shapes, right? I, we don't shape the Psalms. The psalm shapes our lives. And, and maybe that's the big, one of the biggest things that I've, uh, that I've learned through all, all the Psalms. Um, any, any last, uh, we'll, uh, we're actually kind of ending the, or getting to the end of our time. Uh, so we want to pray, but any last comments that any of you have about, uh, you know, what's out of the morning sessions, what's, what's one of the hopes you have, uh, as you're preparing, um, towards the gathering? I'll go first. Uh, first of all, let me just say thank you, uh, to you adult leaders who are, who are leading these kids. Um, it's not easy uh, 
it's not easy to uh, to take the time off. It's not easy to uh, get enough sleep <laughs> and to fill hungry bellies and to wait in line, all that kind of stuff. Um, this is a real service uh, you are doing to the church. Uh, you're doing it on behalf of your congregation, on behalf of uh, uh, other congregations on our behalf. Uh, we realize we're, we're very well, well aware of the fact that the stuff that we plan is really only supportive to you as you walk alongside those kids. Um, and so, first of all, we just want to say uh, thank you for that. Uh, our, our prayer really with the, or my prayer at least with the, with the morning sessions is that um, you're going to be on uh, about uh, for a large part of the day as you're trying to corral kids and you're trying to, to uh, make sure everyone's in line, all that kind of stuff. Uh, our hope is that during the morning session, you have, you know, close to an hour where you can sit and, and receive. Um, and we'll, we'll engage you. So it's not just a passive sitting there, but we want you to, uh, to be able to, to be able to grow and to benefit as well. When your kids see that, when they see you learning, when they see you growing, uh, that makes, that makes them, uh, recognize that you're being real with them. Um, and so consider yourself a participant with them, uh, even as you're kind of, uh, one of the, one of the older brothers or sisters, uh, we might say, who's kind of helping guide them along the way. I think the real part is resonating with me. And um, I just want to say that you can be your real self. I teach high school students every day. My husband thinks I'm crazy. Um, I really do love them, uh, but they want the real you. Just like we want to know the real God so that we um, don't have to pretend in front of him. They want to see um, the real you, which like Todd said, means you don't have to have all the answers. Um, sometimes it's just a hand on the shoulder or a, I'll look into that with you. Um, so don't feel like you've got to be something different than you are. Um, your willingness to stand up and do this speaks volumes about your character already either that you're very gullible <laughs> somebody asked you and you didn't know what you were saying yes to that happens <laughs> um, but you're you're necessary in who you are in the talents and the gifts that you have um, every team that comes together brings different gifts and that's the same for your youth um, the, all the leaders have different gifts to bring and I just want you to really know that a real God is really present in your life and he wants you to be with those kids um, as who you are not something you think you should be and kids really respond to that I feel how can I add to both of those things that you both just said that's so good uh, uh, one thing though um, that I would say, uh, as I know, just as it, if this is your first gathering experience as you're planning um, and as we're planning morning sessions, I just want uh, youth leaders to know um, th that the way that this, this the gathering has been designed, the way that we're kind of laid out the schedule, um, we know, uh, first of all, I know that the schedule can sometimes be the, the, the trickiest part for a youth leader because there's like so much going on and so much happening. Um, but we're designing. Long list to Mrs. Baker. Long list to Mrs. Baker. <laughs> <laughs> what is going on? Here? I'm at school. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. Sorry. So much going on that um, <laughs> that we want a morning session to be something that everyone is doing, and it's it's a it's a way that everyone again can start out their day together. Even though we're in different places, we're starting out together. Um, it's a chance for, for you uh, that will hopefully be connecting what happened the night before at mass events and, and get you ready for the day. And so, um, so the long story short, uh, youth leaders, mark morning session uh, on your daily calendar, uh, those three full days, um, make it something that your youth group does uh, because it is designed to be kind of like the launch pad uh, for the gathering day. Um, from there, you got a whole host of things you can choose from and do, and I hope you do as many of those things as you can, uh, but just highlight morning session and, and get there in the morning. We, we promise it will be worth it. Yeah, and, and, and actually, uh, Jessica asked a great question, and, um, and, and Jessica, that actually leads into this next piece as we kind of close down. Um, we've got some webinars coming up in January, February, and March that, that really are going to start to give some some very specific elements of, of the gathering. So for example, in January, I know we're gonna talk uh, about uh, January end and February about schedule and some specific times. Um, 
we are looking at a, a start times. There will probably be two different sessions of of uh, morning sessions or two different times of morning sessions. So there there will be the earlier one at nine and another one at ten thirty, depending on on where you're at. So um, there's going to be more revealing in schedules, but we we try to shift it about as late as we could uh, to get people sleep because we know that that's important too. And uh, you're going to hear a lot more about that into the upcoming um, webinars. And in fact, I want to encourage you that in January, there's a little bit of shift. We've always done it the first Thursday in January. Since it's the third, we're, we're taking it back a week um, because we know a lot of people will be on vacation to January uh, 10th. So the second Thursday in January, we'll do that. And um, we start getting really down to revealing some of the specifics within the gathering program, uh, including some of the the, the, the speakers and session people are, are coming later on. So I wanna make sure that you uh, tune in on that. And we've also got some, uh, some, some fun surprises that are gonna be announced on the webinars coming up. So I wanna uh, mark those on your calendar. Uh, as we end our time today, uh, I wanna, uh, first of all, I wanna echo uh, Roy's words. We have been so blessed by amazing planners and that they have such great gifts. And it's so fun to watch um, the gifts and talents that God has given the church come together and plan something like this. So we are so grateful for, for the three of you and your team, along with all the other planners and all the time that you give. Um, I, I don't know if you, 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 maybe you don't know this, we don't pay you for this. Uh, so they do this out of the goodness of their heart. And um, they, they do it because they love youth and they love adult leaders who, uh, as Peter said, invest uh, such important ways into their kids, into your kids' lives. So um, what we want to do is just end where, um, where our three uh, morning session leaders are, are going to, uh, to pray for you as the adult leader because that's really where our heart's at. So um, Peter, if you can get us going and, uh, and then Kelly and Todd, if, if you can you follow just praying for our adult leaders, that would be great. All right, let's pray. Dear Lord, Heavenly Father, uh, we gather together, um, even though we're apart uh, through this webinar, we gather um, so grateful uh, for your incredible gifts to us through your son, Jesus. Uh, Lord, you have brought us together and you have redeemed us and you have forgiven us and you have restored us and you have enlivened us uh, and you have sent us, Lord, uh, to proclaim your goodness, to proclaim your grace uh, to every generation, um, and even especially to our children and our youth. Uh, Lord, uh, we are very grateful uh, to you uh, for these incredible gifts. We ask that this gathering, uh, starting in local congregations with small youth groups perhaps, and we ask that this would be a, a time of great growth and learning and maturing in the faith for all of us. Uh, Lord, we trust that uh, that you are good and that you provide uh, for all of our needs. Uh, Lord, I ask that you would strengthen these adult leaders, give them wisdom, uh, give them humility, uh, give them confidence. Uh, and Lord, uh, let them find joy in their service to these young people of your church. Lord, I just want to thank you for this time that we've had. I just find it amazing how refreshing it is to be um, gathered around your word and um, I just want to um, ask for you to pour out your spirit on the adult leaders, that they would um, feel equipped through you and that you're with them and filling in the gaps where they need it. I'd also ask for the wisdom for them to know when to ask for help um, and the humility to accept it. Um, and Lord, I just echo Peter with the great joy. Um, it is such a joy to share your word, especially with the youth and help them um, have an anchor, have a, an experience with the real present God that they um, can build on as they grow. And Lord, I would just ask that you would um, make our planning fruitful and um, make us more like your son every day. Father God, uh, finally God, we, um, we come to you at this time that it's, Lord, it's busy. There's a lot going on in the world, in our lives, Lord. Advent is right here. Uh, Christmas is around the corner. And so, God, I pray for the, the youth leaders uh, who are, are juggling lots of different things right now, probably wearing many, many hats, lots of things on their mind. But, God, in the midst of all of this, uh, Lord, <laughs> let, let yourself be present, uh, just, as, just as you've promised. God, this is a time of the year where, Lord, we celebrate that, that you are 
real. You came to this world uh, as, as a baby, as an infant God. Uh, you came to be with us, uh, to be with us uh, now and forever. And God, because of that, we praise you. Uh, we praise you because of your, your death, your resurrection, your, your promise, uh, Lord, that nothing, nothing can hurt us, nothing can harm us, not ultimately, God, uh, because of your son and everything that he has won for us in that empty tomb. God, I pray that you give that promise, that hope, Lord Jesus, uh, to every single youth leader uh, watching this right now and whatever it is that they're going through, uh, let their hope be found in you, uh, Lord Jesus. Uh, Lord, uh, we give you thanks uh, and praise for all that you've done for us this day and always. That's in your son's name we pray today. Amen. Amen.